What's up guys, BTBS here. Welcome back to another episode of Dire Beast. I think that's going to be the name for this series. I like it. It works uh, good. Works well for me. Damn it. I don't like how slow these things are. Oh, but I do like the heads. Super useful when you get all the heads. Uh, so, I've been doing quite a lot of work. Uh, probably way more than I should between episodes. But let's see, I've got four berry bushes now, so I can make the best uh, berry-based food. I've got a nice cotton farm here. Uh, I put a chandelier outside just because I could. Uh, I've been working on the house quite a bit. Uh, let's take you through some of the changes and then get into the episode, shall we? Uh, the first thing I found are these drying racks, which are from Tinker's Construct. And you hang rotten flesh on them. And it dries and becomes monster jerky, which is basically rotten flesh but without any negative side effects. But I prefer to use them for hanging other stuff up on the walls with, because it looks awesome. So uh, let's go take a look downstairs. You'll notice straight away I've added a new room here. Uh, it's currently a basement. And this is going to be for today's episode. Down here we move into the sub-basement, which I must say is looking nice. I really like the way this looks. And this is going to be my Tinker's Construct setup. There's going to be one uh, smeltery over here for fully automation. Just make sure, yeah, there you go. Sorry, my uh, my mic just sounded a bit quiet to me. Need new headphones. Um, so that one's going to be fully automated and I'll explain that when we do it. This one is going to be my one for actually cooking stuff at the time. So it's got the little casting tables in <clears throat> the pattern chest. And in here I'm just going to put other Tinker's Constructs, things like tool stations, stencils, that sort of thing. So this is going to be my fully, like, my full Tinker's Construct setup. And I really like the way this room looks. Like, being open and large and being all wooded. I think it looks really cool. That might just be me. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get on with what I've got planned for the episode. Believe it or not, I actually have plans for like the next four episodes. I actually know what I want to do for them. Um, I've been mining quite a bit. I'll give you a quick snapshot of what I've got. Uh, added some more barrels, made them extra dimensional, the, the big barrels that can hold the 128 stacks. And I've got over 200 stacks of cobble. Of course I have. Uh, I've been wearing out these tools constantly, super quick, so I have been getting a lot of iron. Uh, but yes, today, I think it's about time we got a machinery set up. Uh, you know what, give me one second, there's some seared bricks. I've hit level 30 again for, like, I don't know, the 20th time. I die a lot. Those, uh... He Hecates, Heyax, whatever those fucking ghost guys that I really hate. Three, four, five, six. Um, they keep killing me. Because even with full iron armor, they kill me in like four hits. So they turn invisible, and they strafe around me, and then a second one appears out of nowhere. I'm taking double the hits I'm expecting, and I die before I can swing my fucking sword. It doesn't help that my sword inflicts me with mining fatigue three, that's why it swings so slowly. Interesting that actually. I like the way they did that. But anyway, today we are going to get into some machines. So, very simple. You've got the machine frame, thermal expansion machines, steel or iron, any kind of glass, and some gold in the middle makes your machine frame. This is like the industrial craft machine block. Oh, wrong chest. By the way, I upgraded a bunch of my chests. So I've got gold chest there, I've got an iron chest here full of backpacks, and I made a lot of backpacks for mining with. Uh, my wood chest needed to go diamond. And I've got gold chest here, which is for dumping stuff into before putting it in here. And I upgraded these two to iron, just so I had some more space. So yes, let's, uh, let's have a look at the machine, shall we? I really don't know what I'm going to need. I'm going to need a lot of copper... I want to build most of these machines. I'm going to need a lot of redstone circuitry and stuff. So let's take that and that. I hear skeletons outside my house. I hear you out there. Wait, is that not right? Oh wait, it's gold in the center, isn't it? Yes. So redstone reception coil, that's 
uh, in the law of the machine. That's basically how they get their bits. Uh, I actually believe I have a piston in my wood chest. Lovely. Uh, I need some flint. And I can't remember what else I need. What am I making? I want to make a redstone furnace and a pulverizer. What did I, what did I miss for a pulverizer? <laughs> pulverizer. Oh, copper ingots, of course. Duh. Um, I don't know if I actually have any copper. Let me go and check my big chest down here. This is where most of my ingots and stuff are. I've got some copper. Ah, pick it up. Thank you. There we go. Oh, wow. This pick is super good at breaking ladders for some reason. I don't know why that is. There we go. Pulverizer. And to go along with the pulverizer, we're going to want a redstone furnace. Or two. Uh, they use the energy to cook stuff. Oh, there's loads of furnaces in here. Slag furnace. Furnace heater. Alchemical furnace. Induction furnace. Electric furnace. So really, I should have upgraded my normal furnaces to iron furnaces. So they're more effective. But I kind of forgot to do it. And the moment passed me by. Uh, what do I need? I need another redstone reception coil. And some bricks, which means I need to cook some clay. I have some clay. Let me just cook a stack of that up quick. Do, 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 do. Stick that in there. Stick that in there. Hey, look, it's monster jerky already. So it's pretty quick. But yeah, you can hang uh, pretty much anything from these. And it looks really cool. Let me put that monster jerky back on there. I think the monster jerky is a reference to Don't Starve. Because you can do that in Don't Starve. Uh, pretty much the same method as well. You use a drying rack to do it. So, redstone furnace. Da -da 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 -da. Machine frame. Copper. And I just need some bricks. Damn it, that gives me one brick. Block. Oh, that's one. Do, 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 do. Craft. There we go. God damn it. Computer's running a little slow. I've got a few uh, extra programs running in the background. I hope this doesn't affect the quality of the video at all. It shouldn't do. You so slow, Redstone Furnace. Right. In the meantime, we're going to need power. And uh, Thermal Expansion has its own power now which comes from dynamo engines. You have steam, magma, uh, compression, and reactant. So basically, one that you feed like wood or coal and water, one that you feed lava, which I don't have a stable supply of yet, uh, one that you feed fuel or other such things, and you have to feed it a coolant, it's like water. Hang on a second. One second, guys. Right, sorry about that. Uh, one of the wires just came out the back of my computer and I completely lost functionality in my devices. Uh, sorry about that. Right. So, yes. Um, you've got steam engine, magma engine, compression, which is fuel and a uh, thing. It actually says it. Uh, requires fluid fuel and a coolant and I have no idea what the reactant dynamo is all about. So I'm thinking this one's going to be the easiest to make. We're going to need silver. I've got some silver I think. Yeah, I've got plenty of silver. I've made a few silver blocks. I remember them being quite ugly. The silver ingots holy fuck are they ugly. And the silver blocks they're not bad looking. They're a bit blue grey considering they're supposed to be, well, silver as the name would in in tail, in tail in I can't think of the word. What's the word? The name would in fur imply. Let's go with imply because I'm starting to sound like an idiot right now. So that's that, and those on either side. I'm going to need a couple of those. Uh, are my bricks done? Lovely. Get me another brick going, and that is my redstone furnace for cooking things. Now while that's going, I'm going to need more copper to make this, I think. Four, four, three, uh, no, I'm not actually. Uh, I am going to need sticks, wood, possibly iron? No, sticks and stones. 
Let me just take eight of these to get a stack of sticks. And I'm definitely going to need some stone. Like so. And a crafting table. So I'm going to make a few of these because I'm bound to use them a lot. Do, 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 do. Make yourself some wooden gears. Take the wooden gears. Coat them in stone. Take the stone gears. Coat them in copper. Yes, that is how you make those copper gears good. I was worried then. And then we need three of those. Two of those. One of those. And one of those. No? Wrong recipe? Like that? There we go. Um, I do want to make more than one steam dynamo. Because that's kind of, you know, just one. I wouldn't have one engine powering my entire setup. I need more copper. Seriously, what happened to all my copper? There's copper ore? No, not much really else going on in there. Okay, well, let's get this one set up and uh, get pump in some energy and then we can have a bit of fun with it, can't we? Um, for this, we're going to need an aqueous accumulator. Aqueous accumulator. Everybody knows these. These are the ones that make infinite water. Uh, pneumatic servo, glass, iron, redstone. Not a problem. Do, do, do. do I have any iron on me? I do, do, do not. So it's glass, iron, redstone. I can't remember in what order it is. There we go. Make me a pneumatic servo. And then I'm just going to need some tin, which I don't have on me. God damn it. Oh, I'm so not prepared. I thought I was fairly prepared for this episode. Turns out I was wrong. I bet I've got tin down here as well. Ugh. Sorry about this. I really thought I was better prepared. Tin, tin, tin. There's some tin. I want tin blocks. Yes. Blocks of silver, blocks of aluminium, blocks of lead. I'm going to grab some lead just in case. Because I might need some of that later. I can't remember all the components for all these machines. Unlike the uh, uh, industrial craft machines, I don't actually think I've ever made these before. So I don't know how uh, to make them. At least not right off the top of my head. Now I need a bucket. Do, 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 do. Is that everything? I don't have glass on me. Oh yeah, I took glass out for one thing, but not the other. No? Come on, stop being a dick. Oh, my machine frames are down here. There we go, aqueous accumulator. And to go with that, I'm gonna need some pipe to transfer fluid. And I believe that is called fluiduct. Uh, fluid. Just UCT, yeah, there it is. Fluiduct. Um, Normal fluid duct, hardened glass and copper, or this fluid duct, copper and lead. I did need lead. I was right. So this is much cheaper to make. Where's my copper? Oh, for... I thought I heard someone walking in front of my house. Damn kids these days. Seriously, do I not have any copper? I'm terrible. Hang on a minute, I spelt that wrong. There we go. Now it's lighting up in my inventory. There's one copper ore, there's six copper ore. Well, this is just terrible. Bashar. Bashar, I say. Bollocks to it. I'm just going to cook some of this. Also, bollocks is a fantastic British word. I love it. Bollocks is just so... And see, this is where the jokes would normally start. Bollocks is... I mean, it's me just talking about bollocks, literally. Oh, what have my my videos devolved into? Do, 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 do. Oh, I don't see any buckets. I've got some buckets of milk, but no. Grab these, go and grab some water. Actually, I've got water in my house. I built an infinite water source. Sorry about that. Fucking phone interference. There's nothing I can do to stop that. Especially since I use my phone to time my videos, so it kind of has to be close. Copper. Now, fluid ducts. Uh, nope, you. 
I can't spell. God damn it. Fluid ducts, copper and lead. I have lead, right there. Nope. Uh, I have lead blocks. Oh, I'm so not prepared for this. I'm so sorry, guys. Feel free to hate me if you want. So I want to put my machines set up down here for now. I'm thinking if I have my actual machines about halfway in this room. So my actual machines will go about here. Just before halfway. So you come in and there's still plenty of room in this room. Which means power generation. So machines go here. Uh, wires. Or anything else. I don't think you need really wires. So if I just build a little infinite water pool back here. Um, ow. Okay, I need to grab some extra bark and just make a little water pool for my aqueous accumulator. By the way, aqueous accumulator, one of the greatest items in any mod. It just solves all the problems that arise from not being able to get a stable water supply. And it solves those problems by giving you a stable water supply. You know what? I don't need these on me right now. Let's dump them off, just in case. I don't want to accidentally, you know, destroy my treehouse. Does that lead outside? It does not. Oh, god damn it, I can't fly. I don't know what's wrong. For some reason, my morph for the bat just still doesn't let me fly. I've tried replacing it multiple times, but the bat still just says, nope. I have the ocelot, which apparently takes no fall damage, which is pretty cool. Right, I am not falling for that again. Get it? Falling for it. <laughs> I'm a lot riot. Oh, don't worry, I hate me too. So what you do for an aqueous accumulator, you get two buckets of water, one on either side of it, and then you place it in between them, and it acts as a water storage medium. Basically, filling itself up with water for free. And then you pump the water out of it, using anything you want. If I look at that, it should say, uh, let me turn that off and see my outputs. And I want the output to be set upwards. I think that's upwards. I don't have my uh, thing on me. Yeah, that's the outwards outward. Out upwards output. You know what? I don't like this trapdoor. It does nothing but get in the way. And also, if I don't eat, I'm going to die next time I fall stupidly. Which I can guarantee will not take long. So, um, I need my crescent hammer. I showed you guys how to make this before. It's just iron and tin. It's thermal expansion. It's the thermal expansion wrench. And it works for a lot of other things as well. It lets you rotate almost any block in the game. So, there you go. It now says fluid water. So it is filling up with water. And uh, I'm going to want my engine. Let's put it there. And it's going to need to pump the power into something. So, this is expansion. So I can put extra engines in. And to pump power, I'm going to need leadstone. Oh, it's L E A D, isn't it? Yes, lead uh, stone. So, factorization, no, not factorization, thermal expansion added different tiers of uh, energy conduits. Before it was just redstone, now you've got leadstone, which you can then upgrade to hardened, which holds more. They only hold a certain amount of. Um, energy as it is so this only holds 80 so it's super cheap but it's just lead redstone and glass so you don't need any complicated machines to make it which means um, you don't have to use alternate ways of doing it basically uh, between the last time I've played this and this time uh, factorization has updated and is now not factorization thermal expansion is now pretty much its own independent mod and in fact I want to make a leadstone energy cell which is a block of redstone glass and lead so once again quite cheap to make seeing as it is tier one what? leadstone energy cell frame oh that makes the frame okay so that makes the frame and then we use the frame oh you can use it to make magnum crucible energetic infuser and the leadstone or hardened if you have invar which I don't, so I'm going to have to go hardened first. What does it need? Copper and redstone conductance. And of course, I only have three copper. Oh, hurrah, hurrah, hooray. There we go. No? What's wrong now? Do I not have that? 
fuck? Leadstone energy cell frame. Electrum ingot. Oh, I'm going to have to make Electrum, aren't I? Okay, so I need Electrum blend, so I need to mash down silver and gold. I've got some silver on me. I can get a piece of gold. So I'm going to have to set these machines up very quickly and actually do something with them. So uh, what I'm going to want here is pulverizer leading into the redstone furnace. So what you can do with these machines is uh, they have these faces on them and depending on the color you set them depends where what they're going to output and to where and so you can put the machines in a big long line like this and it can automatically you know bring in ores and then it can crush them and smelt them and then output them to a chest or whatever you want it to do. I just want a gold and an iron, uh, no gold and a silver I just need to get a little bit of energy to here. So give that a twonk. And stick a stack of charcoal in it. And it should start producing fairly quickly. There we go. It's storing up energy before it does anything. Okay, it's storing up uh, like two, 3,000 before it moves. And the pulverizer, as you might have guessed, just pulverizes stuff. It's uh, basically your uh, macerator. But since um, I'm really not going to be using much industrial craft in this mod, I'm going to go mostly factorization. No, thermal expansion. I'm sorry, I keep calling it the wrong name and I don't know why. And it is actually really bugging me. And then you've got your redstone furnace. Maximum power usage of 20, so this is as fast as it cooks, which is pretty damn fast, to be fair. Especially considering it's being powered by steam which is basically nothing right now and I'm gonna need a couple of these and now I should be able to make my leadstone energy cell yes so without getting almost any machinery you can make your energy storage medium fairly quickly as well which is nice uh, I think if I output upwards with these like this and then have them come out like that and then into my energy storage device so this face is blue so what I want to do is just change all the faces to yellow on the uh, energy storage yellow is inert so if I change it to yellow and then see okay so this represents that face I think orange is the uh, output blue is the input no possibly wrong that hasn't been rotated Duh. Yeah, so blue is the input, orange is the output, so I want to change this face, which I think would be this one, to orange, and then whatever I connect it to, it will be uh, giving off power, but I actually want to change that to the bottom, to orange, so I can just run a leadstone energy cell line downwards. So that's... It's not hard to get stuff set up, I just made it look a lot harder than it needed to be. I need to make some more of this. No, what am I missing? I need more redstone. There we go. It's basically just a lot of redstone and glass and lead early on. Redstone, glass, lead and copper. Pretty much the um, most important things early on. So there we go. Connect that to there. This is storing its energy from there and outputting its energy into these. These have their own internal buffer. As you can see it says energy stored and it also tells you its maximum power usage. So if you stick something in there and um, the maximum power usage doesn't match, if the power usage doesn't match the maximum power, then something's going wrong because it's not running as fast as it could for some reason and you need to work out why. But um, let's have a look. With these uh, on the back, you can right click with the crescent wrench to just disable them from that machine. So that's a really simple way of doing it. Yes, that is what I love about the Crescent Wrench. It is just the most trolly item of all time. You can just rotate pretty much anything, and you can even move where torches are attached to. It's pretty fucking funny. So this thing's barely, you know, it's... Okay, it's burnt through quite a bit of charcoal. 4K EU in a generator. It doesn't say what it produces in RF. I think... Um... Coal probably produces better than charcoal. 
because it's harder to get and you know charcoal especially when you have the trees I have I'll just show you quickly I grew two more of these redwood trees by planting the saplings I will show you how to do that because I know a lot of people can never work it out and are perplexed by it I grew a couple of those and got a whole load more uh, saplings and wood so uh, uses for this we have our redstone furnace and our pulverizer awesome What's next? We have a sawmill. Gets you more logs from... It gets you more wood from your logs, like more planks. And provides sawdust, which can be compressed and then cooked into charcoal. So, it's a more efficient way of doing it. We have the induction smelter. We have the magma crucible. The fluid transposer. Glacial precipitator. Igneous extruder. Aqueous accumulator. Cyclic assembler. And the energetic infuser. So there's a lot going on here, and what I would really like to get would be, not the magma crucible, I want the induction smelter, which means I need invar. And to create invar, you need invar blend, which is pulverized ferrous and pulverized iron. Now, one thing I didn't mention about the uh, smelter, not the smelter, the pulverizer, it's kind of interesting with certain materials. Uh, so if we take our ferrous, there's the rest of it, and look at the uses here. When used in a pulverizer, there's a 10% chance that we'll get platinum. Because shiny is exactly platinum, just from a different mod. So there's a 10% chance of getting a different output. And that happens a lot with things in the pulverizer. So when pulverizing gold, there's nothing. Uh, iron has a 10% chance of giving you ferrous. Um, when pulverizing wool, you have a chance of getting the dye. Which actually works really nice uh, if you do it with white wool. You can get infinite bone meal at the cost of 1600 redstone flux units per operation. And since I've already devised a way of getting infinite free energy, that doesn't really bother me. So I need to pulverize iron. Hmm. Uh, induction. Ooh, induction furnace. I forgot about that. So what is it? It's two iron for every one ferrous. So if I stick two ferrous in there, and then two iron afterwards, let's see if we get really lucky and get anything. Come on, give me some platinum. You know you want to... Ah! Four ferrous, so I'm going to need plenty of iron. See, it's running at the maximum power it can, so this is as fast as the pulverizer runs, which is really fast compared to some other things. <coughs> Macerator. <coughs> Macerator. But oh, our uh, leadstone energy cell is already full and our engine, our machines are full and they're running. So this thing really doesn't last long. So what we want to look at already is upgrading it. So if we take our leadstone energy cell and upgrade it, we just need Invar to upgrade it to the hardened energy cell. So it goes from holding 400,000 redstone flux and being able to send and receive 80 redstone flux a tick to being able to hold 2,000k, which is 2 million redstone flux, and it's able to send 400 redstone flux a tick. And all we need for that is some invar. And uh, we're actually making invar right now. It's just as simple as that. Ooh, so invar is super easy to make sometimes. I think I can put aside four of those ingots to upgrade that. In fact, as soon as I get four ingots, I will. Because these machines have their own internal power supply, and the leadstone energy cell has a nice little feature as well. Um, can this be? No, okay. I thought that could be crafted into wood so I could make a crafting table downstairs. But no, so if we take our leadstone energy cell, and don't worry, I know it's got 400,000 energy in it, but if I just upgrade it, it keeps its energy amount exactly. So just by sticking some extra metal on the outside of this thing, we have, what, what have we upgraded its capacity by five times? Dick's not there. On there. Oh, I'm going to have to, hmm. So where did the blue side go? Oh, I placed it just the opposite direction. So it remembers its facings, and the facings are based on the direction you placed it. So that should be perfect. 
and now it has a lot more storage space, five times the storage space. Um, the bad thing about these steam dynamos, they are not efficient. As soon as they run out of heat, they will use another coal uh, or charcoal, whatever you've put in its inventory. Even if it only needs like one extra redstone flux, it will use an entire charcoal to get that redstone flux going. We've got the invar, so let's um, build this induction smelter quickly. Because holy crap, it's almost, it's basically time to end the episode. When did that happen? It, it feels like I've been recording for like three seconds. Induction smelter. There we go, induction smelter. And I will give you an explanation of the induction smelter before I sign off. Because this thing is super, super badass. And it's going to go on its own over here because it doesn't need to feed into anything else. So the induction smelter, if you take a look, it cooks things like ores, but it needs a catalyst. So, you know, to cook something normally, you can use sand, but as well as using sand, uh, you can also use rich slag, which will triple the uh, output. Um, just using just using this machine on its own doubles your output and gives you a 15% chance of getting your enriching rich slag. Uh, you can use this pyrothium dust, which is sulfur, coal dust, redstone, blaze powder, to get two of it. And that gives you a 15% chance of getting rich slag, which I believe is just a little higher than sand. No? I thought sand was a 10% chance. Oh, yes. Yeah, there you go. Sand, 10% chance. Hmm. Yeah. No, 25% chance of slag. Oh, okay. So, let's do it this way and look at it from this direction. Induction smelter. So, 40% chance from redstone ore. And it gives you an entire redstone block. That's nice. 15% chance on ferrous. I guess that's because ferrous is rarer. Um, when cooking dusts back into ingots, it's a 25% chance of slag. Which can now be used to make clay. Sweet! And you can use it to make a floor. Awesome. Okay, I was not aware of that. You can also make rock wool, which is basically looks exactly like wool, but doesn't burn. So, the induction smelter is a way of sidestepping the whole uh, grind it, then cook it process by cooking it all at once, and gives you an opportunity to get extra out of it by getting the rich slag, which you can use to cook things to triple your output. And then there's also um, a nice little thing called cinnabar, right here, which you get by pulverizing redstone, so might be worth doing, 25% chance, and if you use it, it guarantees you your extra output. So not only does it triple your output, but it guarantees you your extra. So if you use it to cook ferrous, it guarantees that you get shiny or platinum ingots. And at the cost of four redstone ore per one on average, I'd say that's pretty fucking good. Oh man, I'm so glad to have these machines set up. Oh, this is going to be so nice. So what I'm going to do with my pulverizer is turn its red output. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to turn its output orange, so it's red and yellow, and turn its output to this side. And then when I put something in there, like the ferrous, it will automatically output into the redstone furnace. So it didn't even appear. Straight into the redstone furnace. Redstone furnace cooks it up. And then I'm going to have that output to a chest on its side or um, possibly a chest above it because I don't have anywhere else to really put it. I don't want to go ripping up the floor to run a hopper chain underneath. But, you know, we have extra room underneath. This is one of the reasons I wanted this machine room to be here because I can have this floor be three thick if I want just to accommodate extra hoppers and wires and things. But, um, yes, I have the basic machinery set up now. Five machines, I've got second tier energy supply already because I did so much mining and I've already got one engine. I'm going to get some more and I'm going to do some more stuff and I'm going to see you next time. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've been BTBS. This has been the Dire Beast uh, mod pack as I'm calling it. Uh, well my series is Dire Beast. I was going to call it Feed the Wolf but I don't really like the sound of that. Dire Beast sounds pretty cool. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I will see you next time. Peace out.